Detective recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime film called Drive. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man donning a silk white jacket stands in the dark. A large embroidery of a golden scorpion streaks across the back of his jacket. The man is a Hollywood stunt driver, and he moonlights as a getaway driver for criminals. Over the phone, the driver starts going over his terms with a client. He gives them five minutes to complete a robbery. If anything goes wrong before or after those five minutes then the driver will leave and they'll be on their own. He hangs up and leaves his cell phone in his hotel room. He gets ready and picks up a car from his friend Shannon who runs an auto shop. He goes to meet his clients by a gate then sets his watch to five minutes. There are two men clad in balaclavas and they proceed to go in to steal the money as the driver turns the police radio on while simultaneously listening to a live basketball game on another radio. One of the robbers hauls a bag of money with him as he gets in the driver's car while the second robber is lagging behind. The police have already been notified of the gunshots and are on the way to their location. The clock is ticking. The driver's five minutes are almost up. Finally, the second man comes in and the driver jets off. A police car passes in the distance so the driver parks the car and turns off the lights. Both robbers take off their masks then let out a nervous breath. The driver waits. He lets the cop car pass before finally proceeding. They drive on and start following behind the police car. After a while, they turn to another road, leaving the cop car behind. On their way, they encounter a helicopter hovering above with a searchlight shining down. The driver speeds the car up and makes an abrupt stop underneath an overpass to hide and shake the helicopter loose. After the copter leaves, they continue. It almost seems like they're in the clear right until they come face to face with a cop car on the other end of a stoplight. They hear the cops on the police radio eyeing them. The tension in the air grows thick but the driver keeps his cool and thinks over which move to make. He eventually decides to foot it and they zoom past the cop car, prompting the cops to give chase. A pursuit ensues and the cops try to catch up but the driver outmaneuvers them, giving him a huge lead. Just out of the cops' vision, the driver rushes into the basketball arena to park there just as a huge crowd of fans fills up the area. The driver leaves the car, takes off his jacket, dons a sports cap, and casually walks away. Confused and disoriented, the police struggle to search the place because of the immense crowd, leaving them effectively thrown off. The driver goes returns to his apartment building. In the elevator, he meets a young and beautiful woman holding a laundry basket. They watch each other in silence before walking to their apartment doors which turn out to be just next to each other's in the hallway. The following morning, the driver goes to his day job as a stunt driver. He wears a police uniform and the film crew takes a shot of him doubling over a car and rolling over. Later, he gets off work and goes to the supermarket where he encounters his neighbor again but this time, she's with her young son. After they finish shopping, they go to the supermarket's parking lot and there, the driver notices that the woman's car broke down and he decides to help. Later, the driver, the young woman, and the son are in the elevator to their apartment. The little boy stares at the driver with an inquisitive look on his face, to which the driver smiles while the young mother watches them. The driver helps them out with the grocery bags in their apartment and they get acquainted with one another. Eventually, the driver and the woman Irene take a liking to each other. At a place called Nino's Pizzeria, Shannon and a man named Ross meet to discuss a possible loan for a race car. Shannon tells Ross about how skilled the driver is and that Ross should invest money in his ability. Just then, the owner of the restaurant comes in. Ross tells Shannon he'll think about his offer on the condition that he meets the driver first. The following day, Shannon takes the driver with him to meet Ross. The driver makes laps around a racetrack while Ross watches, impressed. With newfound belief in the driver's skill, Ross gives Shannon both the loan and 70% of their earnings from the circuit. Ross introduces himself to the driver and offers his hand to shake but the driver doesn't look up. It almost appears like he's disrespecting Ross. He calmly removes his gloves and the driver seems to think that Ross is a dignified man. He hesitates to shake his hand and tells him that his hands are dirty. Ross simply tells him that so are his, alluding to both of their involvement in criminal acts. At the auto shop, the driver is working on car repairs. Just then, Irene and her son Benicio come up and talk with Shannon about their broken down car. Benicio hangs around with the driver while he's working and Shannon suggests that the driver should take Irene and her son home. The three of them ride on in the late afternoon sun with Irene in the passenger seat and Benicio at the back. It was quiet in the car but the driver and Irene both seemed to be happy just sitting there next to each other. The driver then asks Irene if she wanted to go see something before they go home, to which Irene said yes to. With her blessing, the driver takes the two of them to see a small lake. 
They play around together and sit by the lake covered in the yellows and oranges of the afternoon sun. Back at the apartment, the driver carries Benicio to his bed. Once left alone in their living room, the driver and Irene thank each other for the wonderful day they shared. Finally, the driver bit the bullet and asks Irene on a date over the weekend and Irene says yes. From then on, the driver spends more time with both her and Benicio. At Shannon's auto shop, Nino and Ross come over to discuss the race with the driver and Shannon. Ross feels excited about the new venture and tells the driver they've got a lot of money invested in his skills. Later that night, the driver and Irene go on a date again. Irene tells the driver that she received a message, saying that her husband is coming back from prison in a week. Irene throws a party for her husband when he gets home while the driver begins to feel bothered about not being able to see Irene and Benicio as much anymore. At the party, Irene's husband Standard makes a speech about his release from prison. His words are filled with both regrets about his past actions and gratitude for the second chance he's been given. During the party, the driver comes out of his apartment door and sees Irene sitting down on the hallway floor by herself. Just then, Standard and Benicio come out to talk with the driver and the tension between the two men builds up. Standard stares the driver down while pretending to be courteous before eventually going. The driver says goodbye to Irene and leaves. He stops at a diner to eat when a former client approaches him. He offers the driver another job but with his sour mood, he lashes out at the man, making him leave. At the apartment parking lot, the driver encounters two shifty-looking guys on his way to the elevator. He spots Standard bloody and beaten to a pulp in a corner while Benicio is in hiding. The driver wastes no time in helping him back to the apartment. Standard explains that he refused to do a job that a guy wanted him to do, leading to two men beating him up. It turns out that he owes them protection money from when he was in prison. Irene later invites the driver for dinner with her family. While eating, Standard recounts the story of how he and Irene first met. After spending some time with them and hearing the story, the driver starts feeling more comfortable around Standard, even warming up to him. Standard, in turn, considers him a friend now. The driver decides to help Standard clear his debt by accepting the job Standard mentioned earlier. The two of them meet with a red-headed woman named Blanche and the man who Standard owes, Cook. As per Cook's instruction, the driver, Standard, and Blanche proceed to rob a pawn shop. The driver winds his watch to five minutes and waits in his car for Standard and Blanche. Just then a suspicious car drives by next to him at the empty parking lot. Blanche comes out of the store and into the car. The two of them wait for Standard who's still inside the shop. Standard appears from the pawn shop door and approaches the car. Before anyone knew it, Standard gets shot by the store owner in the neck and on his torso three times. With how messy the situation is getting, the driver escapes with Blanche. The car next to them gives chase and a second car appears to join the pursuit. The two pursuers try to get close but the driver outmaneuvers them both and succeeds in causing the two cars to crash. Later on, the driver takes Blanche to a hotel room then interrogates her about the second car that appeared. She confesses that Cook meant for this to happen but she didn't know about anyone getting killed. A few seconds later, three men shoot up their hotel room. Blanche gets shot in the head but the driver reacts quickly to the attackers then manages to kill them. He asks Shannon for help to get his wounds patched up. Now in possession of a large sum of money, the driver understands that he'll be hunted down by whoever it really belongs to. The driver eventually tracks down Cook in a strip club. Furious about Standard's death, he assaults Cook with a hammer and breaks his fingers. He forces him to fess up about whose money he helped rob and Cook gives in. He calls Nino, revealing that he's the one who owns the money, then gives the phone to the driver. He tells Nino to meet him somewhere so he can give his money back. In turn, the driver wants him to leave him alone. Back at the apartment, the driver visits Irene to tell her everything that happened with Standard and the money. He asks if she wants to take the money so the three of them can run away together. Just then, the elevator door opens with a man inside. The driver and Irene make their way to the elevator but when he senses that they're in danger, the driver pulls Irene back. He kisses her before attacking the man which results in his death. Irene moves out of the elevator, leaving the driver alone. Now, Irene has fully realized just what kind of man the driver is. The driver meets up with Shannon. He had no clue how they knew where he lived. Shannon explains that he talked to Ross and told him that the driver isn't interested in the money and that he just did it for Irene. The driver is livid now that Irene's put in clear danger. The driver tells Shannon to leave town and never come back for his own safety. Elsewhere, Cook, Nino, and Ross discuss the situation. Ross tells Nino he should have taken the money instead of escalating the conflict with the driver. Suddenly, Ross murders Cook with a kitchen knife as he's a liability who can tie Nino to the robbery. 
Nino then plans to go for the driver and Shannon next. Ross drops by Shannon's shop, ready to execute his plan. He talks about how disappointed he is with the situation but insists that his hands are tied. He has no choice since he'll be the one who'll get in trouble if he doesn't set things straight. After Ross shakes Shannon's hand, he slits his wrist in one fluid motion to give his old friend a merciful death. Meanwhile, the driver has gone and stolen a rubber mask from the movie set where he works. He puts it on to hide his identity. The driver tracks down Nino in his restaurant and waits. As Nino leaves with his car, the driver stalks him until they reach a deserted road. The moment the opportunity arose, the driver crashes his car into Nino's, causing it to wind around near a cliff edge. The driver positions himself and rams into the car, effectively sending it flying down the cliff. When the driver sees Nino walking out of his vehicle, he follows him near the shore. Nino tries to escape but with the sea behind him, there is nowhere else for Nino to go. With no one to save him, Nino is taken by the driver and he drowns him in the waters. Later on, Ross calls the driver and offers to meet with him. He offers a proposition, the driver gives him the money and Ross won't pursue Irene. The driver calls Irene before meeting Ross. He tells her that being around her was the best thing that ever happened to him. When they meet, Ross reiterates that if he can get the money back then he won't harm the girl. He can't, however, promise him the same courtesy since he's already caused a lot of harm. Ross warns him that he'll be hunted down for the rest of his life. After arriving at the parking lot, the two make their way to the trunk of the car. The driver pulls out the bag of money and just as he turns around, Ross stabs him right in the stomach. This doesn't deter the driver and he manages to pull Ross closer to stab him in his chest. The driver manages to survive the ordeal but Ross dies, his lifeless body right next to the open bag of cash. With Irene and Benicio safe, the driver rides on into the night, leaving everything behind. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.